All right, guys, what is going on? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to a new video. It's kind of a gloomy day and I'm having my morning coffee. There's some shaga infused to the liquid here. You can't see any powder in there because as I've showed you guys with my particular shaga coffee recipe, I, uh, I make the shaga tea and then I brew the coffee in the coffee maker with the tea. So the medicinal mushrooms are an incredible gift from the creator, ladies and gentlemen, that we can use to really enhance our health. The medicinal mushrooms are in a league all of their own. You, you know, herbs are great. There's some specific tonic herbs like schizandra, gynostemma, and a few others that have a very special place in my heart and always will. Schizandra is one of my top five herbs, hands down. But when we're talking about the medicinal mushrooms, the medicinal mushrooms are incredible. Most of my favorite natural substances <clears throat> excuse me, substances are medicinal mushrooms. Things like cordyceps, things like shaga, reishi, turkey tail, maitake, lion's mane. These are incredible substances. Reishi spore, reishi extract. So one of the greatest ways to get the medicinal mushrooms into your system, ladies and gentlemen, is in your morning coffee. I find it very enjoyable to do that. So. What I do every morning, or at least I try to, is I let some light in to my eyes while the sun rises, while I drink my coffee. And then to just give you guys a simple protocol for lighting, what I'll also do is at high noon, I'll let some light into my eyes. And then when the sun goes down, I let some light from the sun setting into my eyes while I'm grounded out here in my backyard. And I do that right before I put my UVEX Skypers on to block the blue light. So this is going to, if you do it right, and if you do it grounded, it's going to activate your internal sundial mechanisms, your ancestral environmental switches, and it's going to start balancing out your circadian rhythm to match that of the solar, natural solar and lunar cycles, the celestial cycles, and the sea, changing of the seasons. This is what we're designed to do, ladies and gentlemen. Our internal mechanisms, our brain, our hormonal system, it's supposed to be aware of the natural progression of lighting throughout the day. Here in the matrix, we leave our lights on until 12 in the morning every night, or it's just amazing how late people stay up nowadays because of lighting. That leads to something known as endless summer syndrome, and endless summer syndrome, if you've had that for over a year, and most of you guys have had that your whole life, you end up having what I've coined toxic light syndrome, which is a hormonal system that's completely out of alignment. Your neurotransmitters are completely thrown out of whack, you're basically fried. Now I'm not trying to be a dick, but I'm here to be honest, and most people are fried. They do indeed have not only endless summer syndrome, they've had it for so long that they have toxic light syndrome, which is a lifetime of your hormones being thrown out of whack and, and melatonin suppression from all of the fucking lighting. It's absolutely disgusting what the New World Order has done to us with lighting. But that's besides the point, ladies and gentlemen. Again, Got my coffee, hanging out with one of my favorite trees. So, let's do a, a little bit of ranting, you guys, why not? While we enjoy our morning coffee together. Hope you guys are all staying safe. Hope you guys are constantly applying the health principles that I talk about to your life. Because I know that they can have drastic effects on, beneficial effects on you. I mean, how could addressing your lighting not be beneficial to you, ladies and gentlemen? How could improving the quality of food that you consume not be beneficial? I mean, come on. So let's do a little bit of uh, morning ranting about uh, people complaining and bitching and feeling like victims here in the Matrix. The Matrix wants you to feel like a victim and it wants you to be a very selfish victim. And what I mean by that, ladies and gentlemen, is that let's give let's give some uh, examples first i frequently see people on youtube i frequently see people online complaining about how hard their life is about how you know oh, i'm so sad i can't have everything i want oh my god me 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 i want what i want and I'm not saying that you shouldn't want things, but it gets to a point where your wants 
are so selfish that it becomes absolutely nauseating and fucking disgusting to people who have a bigger sense of what's actually going on in the world. There are people who don't have clean water. There are people who cannot keep the lights on. There are people who cannot afford food other than rice and some other very low priced staples. There are people born without hands. There are people born without, you know, I mean, it's just amazing. Have you ever compared your life filled full of all the complaining that you do to other people? This is something that I like to do. And every time I find myself feeling sorry for myself, which is something that you're going to have to purge out of your system because we all, to some extent, have this where we have all these, oh, I wish I had that, I wish I had this, that, and the other, blah, blah, blah. You've got to purge that out of your system because anytime you find yourself feeling sorry for yourself, there's about a million other people, ladies and gentlemen, that have it about a million times worse than you. And putting yourself into a situation where you're mature enough to realize this can really help hyper launch you into a better state of health, especially mental health, where you can actually have a bigger picture of what's going on and you'll be able to, not necessarily, I don't want to call it justify, but you'll be able to realize how grateful you should be for what you do have. Gratitude is not something that's common here in the matrix, ladies and gentlemen, it's just not. I mean, I saw a YouTuber the other day complaining um, about the most selfish shit. And then, you know, I watched this specific channel on um, YouTube, ladies and gentlemen, about these animals. These, uh, that's the word I want to look, I'm um, looking for, ladies and gentlemen. These unfortunate animals who are born fucked up or, you know, they have like mutations and whatnot. Or like this, I've seen multiple videos of these people, these idiots that take these dogs and they intentionally leave them on these abandoned islands to die and they chain them up. It's disgusting. And then these people come along and find them and rescue them. And by the time they rescue them, they're usually emaciated, skinnier than shit. But that dog, ladies and gentlemen, when they get rescued, wags its tail. It's incredibly grateful. So while people are out here in the matrix complaining about how they don't have a Lexus or how the law of attraction didn't work for them to win a million dollars or all of this other selfish, self-loathing bullshit, there's people out there who are dying because of no water, no food. There's a large majority of the people and the creatures in this matrix are absolutely and undeniably suffering, ladies and gentlemen. So anytime I see some mindless idiot complaining online while he or she has a relatively stable life, you need to shut the fuck up and realize that you have it better than most people. I'm sorry, but I find self-loathing disgusting here in the Matrix. Because here in the Matrix, most people have it pretty damn good. Even the people who don't have... Um, I don't want to say that. I'm just, it's just, it just blows my mind, folks. So I think one of the healthiest frameworks of thought that you can adopt, ladies and gentlemen, is to start realizing what you do have. If you have a roof above your head, if you have warmth, if you're able to pay the bills, if you're able to buy decent quality food, if you're able to afford your morning coffee and your medicinal mushrooms, and if you have access to some land, I mean, I'm incredibly grateful for what I have. Do I wish I had a little bit more money? Yeah, I do. But it's not to buy some Rolls Royce or some stupid bullshit or some $300 jacket or some of this other goddamn nonsense. I wish I had more money so that I could reach more people. I wish that I had a little bit more money so that my quality of life could improve a little bit so that I could have a little bit less stress in my life. But. The more I sympathize with that, the more I realize that, you know what? I like this way of living. I like not having everything that I want because it's just more stimulating, ladies and gentlemen. Life is more real when you don't have the ability to just go out and splurge whenever you want. As if that's the meaning of life, to go shop. Get real.
As I said in a recent video, I quoted Talia al Ghul, also known as Miranda Tate from the Batman series. Suffering builds character. It really does build character, but it's not in the way, at least here in the Matrix where people have it relatively good. How would I put this, ladies and gentlemen, and I really want to try to convey this. I think one of the mechanisms of how suffering works, just one of them, of how suffering builds character, is that through suffering, you begin to realize, uh, you begin to develop gratitude. Because by not having everything that you want, you realize what you do have and it makes that which you have that much more special and through that it makes life more real ladies and gentlemen so yeah I may not have hundreds of thousands of dollars but I've experienced Kundalini I've seen into realms that are highly non-ordinary that the majority of the masses will go their entire lives most likely not even knowing that they exist. That to me is worth far more than dead trees with you know, Freemasons printed on them, also known as money. I have access to this beautiful tree, Michael. Yes, I'd name this tree. Michael might seem a, like a, a strange name for a tree, but there's a reason why I named this tree Michael. I've got trees all around me that have very unique names. As well, ladies and gentlemen, these are the guardians of my home. I work with these trees, pour them libations, you name it. But that's besides the point. I, this to me is worth more than gold. You see, the Matrix has put you in a box where it has you comparing your life to everyone else. So when you log on to social media and you see some chick with some $2,000 coat or this, that, and the other, and she looks quote unquote cute and thin and all this other nonsense, you begin comparing yourself to her because that's what culture wants. Or as a man, you feel inferior because you don't look like the GQ ad on the freeway. And you've got to pull yourself out of that, ladies and gentlemen called pulling your head out of your ass. The Matrix wants you to compare yourself and the lack that you're experiencing, lack, even though it's not lack, most likely, it wants you to compare your perceived lack to the perceived abundance of the cultural ideals that they plaster around you. I hope that makes sense because it's really important to grasp. So again, I find that interesting. I've reflected on this quite a bit lately. That part of the mechanism of how suffering does indeed build character is that through suffering, it helps you chisel away what's actually important from what's not. And in alchemy, excuse me, Jesus. And in alchemy, if I can speak today, this is known as removing the dross, ladies and gentlemen. Isolating the non-necessary components and removing it from that which is necessary. Removing the non-necessary or unnecessary components from that which is necessary. One of the greatest examples of this is dis distillation, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see if I can lock my camera. It keeps changing. It makes my hand look all like a ghostly. What's going on here, folks? I don't freaking know. Let's unlock that. So, back on track. One of the greatest examples of this is water distillation. With water distillation, you're taking an impure substance, most likely tap water, and you're exposing it to chaos. And through the chaos process, you're, you have steam that rises and condenses in a coil and then drips out into a collection jar, a separate vessel, while the impurities are too heavy to rise with the rising steam so they get left behind in the boil kettle and that's why when you open up a distiller you see all the disgusting nonsense in it at the end that is the dross so through suffering we do indeed build character but I think and here's a really important mechanism to understand ladies and gentlemen it builds character 
because it allows you to realize the immaturity of you um, and I really want to try to convey this accurately it allows you to realize the immaturity of your victimhood and when you crawl out of your victimhood and leave it behind to embrace the truth you do improve your character and you start to grow up you see growing up has nothing to do with how much money you have in the bank ladies and gentlemen growing up has nothing to do with how successful you all are, are on Wall Street or any of this other matrix bullshit maturity ladies and gentlemen true maturity has to do with your ability to separate the dross that's been pl plugged into your goddamn mind and remove it Real maturity has to do with acknowledging things for what they actually are. Having the mind and the, uh, the perceptual, perceptual capabilities to do that. Real maturity has to do with being a good human. It has nothing to do with money. And I'm not here to demonize money at all. We live in a world where we have to pay to play, but most people's emphasis is purely on money. It's disgusting. And like I said in a recent video, watching that uh, celebrity flaunt her $100,000 outfit and brag about it and to see all the people liking it and, oh my God, how amazing. This is called the worship of false idols, folks. I don't want to get too biblical with you, but it's true. This is the worship of false idols. And what do false idols bring? Why are they false? Because they lead you astray from the truth and they bedazzle you with shiny objects, folks. They bedazzle you with an accumulation of monetary abundance. They bedazzle you. And they get you distracted by worldly things. Now, I'm not here to say that money is a worldly thing. Money is just a... It's basically a... Um, the ability to, to be able to do things in the material realm. To be able to travel. To be able to... You know things of that nature but but money more often than not is is used for incredibly selfish reasons which is part of the reasons reason why it's like god damn why i'm not even gonna say that excuse me folks there's certain things i want to say that i'm not but again talia al ghul raz al ghul's daughter i believe uh, also known as Miranda Tate in the uh, christian bale batman film says that suffering builds character i believe it was her that said that and that always resonated with me. It's like, you know what? That's so true. There's so many people who have it so much worse than me. And once you realize that, that and integrate it into your biofield and into your heart, you realize how good you do have it. And it makes you identify with the selfish aspect of yourself that used to cling to these worldly ideals. And through acknowledging that you had a bitchy little fucking victim mentality in your biofield you're able to purge it you can only purge it when you are able to acknowledge it ladies and gentlemen and that's how you start to crawl out of your skin that's how you start to shed your skin excuse me and through the shedding process which is a metaphor for leaving that which is unnecessary behind so that you can embrace better qualities when you leave that behind you start to grow imagine that but true growth isn't through watching you know your bank get large, this, that, and the other. True growth is you actually beginning to have sanity. Insanity, ladies and gentlemen, is not what most people think it, think it is. Sanity is your ability to be able to see through the illusions of life, to be able to see the inconsistencies of your program mind and change them to a more righteous ideal. Because any fool can have a large bank account. Only an intelligent individual can use those resources wisely. And money can absolutely be used in wise ways. Money is not the root of evil, ladies and gentlemen. Regardless of what these idiots think, money is not the root of evil. Stupidity is the root of evil. Stupidity is the root of evil. Doing the wrong thing when you know there's a better option. doing the wrong thing out of selfish motives. Stupidity is the root of all evil. Not money. Get real. Money is no different than, it's just resources, ladies and gentlemen. 
And I don't need to hear any, oh, but the Matrix has us bound by fi finances, blah, blah, blah. You know, we just need to all reject the system, man, and like, go live in the teepees, bro. We don't live in that type of world. You see, just because things are not the, the, the way they should be, you've got to make the most of what things are. You can't just change the world like that and have this wishful thinking. But like, yeah, hey, I'm going to rebel against the system, man, and like, you know, money's evil, bro. Money's so evil. No, what's evil is you realizing, how would I put it? I'm not even going to go into that. Because money is not the root of all evil. Human stupidity is the root of all evil. Ignoring the instincts that try to get you to do the right thing, that's evil. The hell out of here. Money's fucking evil. You know how much good you can bring to the world with money? But vanity, ladies and gentlemen, vanity, to, to watch the sins in action is monumental, is it not? Again, I've seen these dogs that were like born without legs or people having to get like their legs cut off or not having a sexual organ or just all this other crazy stuff. And to watch them, oftentimes they're incredibly grateful. It's like, holy crap, this person who doesn't have legs seems more mentally stable and grateful than a lot of the people that I know who are trapped inside of their head, constantly comparing themselves to the plastered ideal that the culture offers in abundance, in magazines and advertisements and television programs, all this other stupid bullshit. If you have your health, if you have a roof over your goddamn head, if you have running water, if you're able to pay the bills, if you have food, again, you've got it a lot better than a lot of people. And once you realize that, you're going you're gonna to have a much stronger foundation to build upon, ladies and gentlemen, to build the rest of your life upon. You see, most of you guys are over 20 years old, most of you guys are over 30 years old, 40 years old, and you've never truly lived because you've spent the majority of your life in your head comparing yourself to the world around you, not even realizing that the world is absolutely fake and designed to hoodwink you. It's designed to trap you. The Archon traps us, ladies and gentlemen, by bedazzling us with its bullshit and getting us to cling to it. And when you cling to the Archon's temptations, you naturally resonate with the current of evil. Selfishness is incredibly evil, ladies and gentlemen, and most of the people that I know are selfish to the goddamn bone. It's ridiculous. People are just strange. I remember growing up and going through high school, there were, uh, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I was popular in high school. I knew pretty much everyone at that damn school. But there were a handful of unfortunate people that went to that school that everyone seemed to make fun of. Now, I'm not gonna name any names, but there were a handful of them. And I don't know, like I, I never viewed them to be different. And I always made relationships with these so-called different people and they were so interesting. And that re those relationships were so special Because they, they, they were unique. 100% unique. And all the people who did pick on them, it was always out of this weird, like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? This tribal, instinctual, pack-like mechanism where like everyone was doing it just because everyone else was doing it. I don't know how to explain it. People are so stupid. We've got to stop judging everybody, ladies and gentlemen, just because they're different. And, you know, uh, it's not that I'm without judgment. I'm judgmental towards things that I view as being evil. That's the other thing. You know, this idea that judgment is bad is ridiculous. 
Judgment is not bad. It's part of the discernment process. You use it when you, you know, decide whether or not you're going to go through that red light or not. It's called judgment. It's called being conscious. If you don't have judgment, you're, gonna, you're not going to last long here in the material plane. When you judge people that, when you judge people or things from a foundation of a lack of the bigger picture with a lack of understanding, that's what makes judgment evil. Anyways, you guys, my battery is giving me an alert. I'm gonna start wrapping this thing, this uh, video up. You know, there's a squirrel up there. I don't know if you guys can see it. I can't even find it on my viewfinder, but... You think the squirrel feels bad when it can't find its nuts or whatever it's looking for? No. It simply does what it has to do to survive. You see, we've got to stop sympathizing with our perceived lack because by doing that, whether you know it or not, you just make it worse. I think the greatest solution out of your perceived lack is to first realize what you do have and be incredibly uh, grateful for it. Because, again, one person's perceived lack is another person's fucking abundance beyond abundance. You've got to realize that, ladies and gentlemen. The, the United States and many of the wealthiest nations in this dimension need an enema on the soul level. Your soul needs to be washed out of all of its garbage. Your soul needs an enema. So what you do in this world, ladies and gentlemen, echoes in the halls of Elysium. I'm getting tingles all over my body right now because it's so very true. What you do now affects everything. Where you go after this, The contentment that you take in your heart after this, or the lack thereof, the weight of your heart is everything, ladies and gentlemen. Look at the weighing of the heart ritual in ancient Egypt. Your heart needs to be light as a feather. How's your heart going to be light as a feather when you spent your life fucking miserable about, oh, I don't have this, I don't have a Gucci bag, or all this other bullshit? Wake up. Realize that your worth as a person and your ability to help others is much more important than some little object. I hope that makes sense. But what you do now, ladies and gentlemen, echoes in the halls of Elysium for eternity. And in my opinion, there's no rules or room for idiots in Elysium. It's just metaphoric, figurative, symbolic uh, speaking there, ladies and gentlemen, that your actions have monumental ripples in the time-space continuum, in the collective conscious, consciousness, excuse me. Life is very special. Don't squander it comparing yourself to half-dead, half-witted zombie celebrities and all of the morons that are being plastered on the television, ladies and gentlemen. You are a unique entity with a biofield. You have the ability to change your life, but it's going to be really hard to change your life. And one of the reasons why I think people struggle to, to become abundant is because they can't realize what they're grateful for that they have now. And if you can't realize that your perceived lack of abundance is someone else's absolute abundance, then how are you ever going to be able to appreciate or even use a large sum of money properly, you name it. Because again, money is a resource. Wake the fuck up. And until next time, peace be with you.